Welcome to Clinician's Notebook by Doc Athena. This is a Contravet's Technical Diary to anyone for free. What is Pyometra? Now let's proceed to case presentation. Pyometra is the inflammation of the uterus aggravated by secondary bacterial infection leading to accumulation of pus in the uterine lumen. Today, we will discuss case number 001, Pyometra in dogs. Case presentation. On February 5, 2010, patient 001, a 5-year and 11-month-old female, Lassa Apso, intact, nulliparous, and never been mated, has been presented to the hospital with a chief complaint of decreased appetence and enlargement of the abdomen. Immediate history for our subjective part of our medical record. On January 2, the patient was brought to another animal hospital for grooming. On January 4, dribbling of clear fluid was observed from vulva. On January 11 to 15, profuse menstruation was observed. By January 25, the appetite started to wane. On February 3, the patient was not eating, but drinking and urinating frequently. And this is clinically called as PUPD or polyuria polydipsia. The abdomen was also enlarged and hard. There was also vulvar secretions. On the same day, the patient was given with oral hydrating solution Ceramycin and doxycycline. On February 5, the patient was brought to the hospital for DHL PPI vaccination update. However, the deworming was not updated. For the objective part of our medical record, during the clinical examination, the patient had a body temperature of 39.7 degrees Celsius, weighing 5.75 kilograms, with a body condition score of 5 over 9, which is ideal. However, there was a delayed CRT or capillary refill time of 3 to 4 seconds. Also, the mucous membranes were pale. The attending veterinarian requested for laboratory tests for further evaluation of the patient. And here are the results. The patient had leukocytosis with marked increase in its total WBC. Also, neutrophilia and monocytosis were observed. The faxal volume or hematocrit was normal, but the platelet was above normal. Microfilaria test at the time was negative. Therefore, there was no heartworm infection at the time. For blood chem, SGPT or serum glutamic pyruvic transaminase was decreased, whereas blood urea nitrogen or BUN was increased. For further evaluation, radiographic examination was also conducted. And as you can see in the photo, this is the left lateral lateral abdominal radiograph of the patient. Observe the enlarged succulated tubular structure with increased opacity in the caudoventral portion of the abdomen. Can you see that? Not here it is. For diagnosis, the patient was diagnosed to be suffering from pyometra based on its history, which is a five-year and 11-month-old bitch, nulliparous, never been mated, and there was PUPD, according to the owner, and decreased appetence. Clinical findings during the presentation were enlarged abdomen, leukocytosis, neutrophilia, and monocytosis, which indicates that there was an ongoing infection or inflammation. Also, for radiography, we found that there was an enlarged succulated tubular structure with increased opacity in the caudoventral portion of the abdomen. Therefore, the patient was diagnosed with pyometra. Based on the history, clinical findings, and radiographic findings, the patient was diagnosed to be suffering from pyometra. As discussed by the attending veterinarian, surgical treatment was proposed and approved by the owner. Therefore, emergency ovarohysterectomy was performed. As you can see here, during the surgical procedure, an incision was made on the skin, subcutis, and linea alba.
the left horn of the uterus was exteriorized first since it is very big, really enormous. Followed by the right uterus, therefore both horns of the uterus were exteriorized. Here, the photo shows the transected horns of the uterus. As you can see, the left uterine horn is enormously large as compared to the right horn. Here, pass oozed out as the left uterine horn was punctured. After the procedure was performed, the incision was closed with subcuticular suture pattern. And as you can see here, there are no suture material because it is under the skin or subcutis but you can see the nuts on both ends of the incision. For post-op prescription, doxycycline, ibuprofen, vitamin mineral supplement or canine red cell and Nutriplus were prescribed. Also, the owner was advised to return the patient on February 12 for follow-up. As advised, the owner brought back the patient to the hospital on February 12, 2010 for follow-up. And during that time, there were no complications observed. However, it was mentioned that constant licking of the wound causes opening of some part of the incision. On June 19, 2010, the patient was brought again to the hospital and the wound was completely healed. Therefore, prescribed medications were stopped and according to the owner, diet and appetite were back to normal. For recommendations for this particular case of pyometra in dogs, we could perform urinalysis as well in addition to the lab tests that we performed. Also for the radiographic procedure, dorsoventral radiographic shot orthogonal to lateral lateral shot could have been performed as well. Culture of uterine contents and antibiotic sensitivity testing could have been helpful for us to identify a more specific antibiotic therapy for the patient. Also, to prevent licking of the wound, it is always recommended that Elizabethan collar or E. collar, or sometimes they call it as cone of shame, could be used as well. For references in this particular clinical case that was presented in 2010, I would like to thank drugs.com, Alitz BE, Edinger SJ and Feldman EC, Foster R, Johnston SD, Kostritz MVR, Olson PNS, Can CM, Landicha EF, Virbak Sante Animal website, Tilly LP and Smith FWK, and Whitney JC. So thank you very much to our references. So that's it for our clinical discussion for Clinician's Notebook. Case number 001, Pyometra in Dogs. Thank you for listening to Clinician's Notebook by Doc Athena. I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope to see you again in our next lecture. Please keep safe, everyone, and God bless us all. Bye! That's all, folks, for our clinical discussion from Clinician's Notebook by Doc Athena. I hope to see you again in our next lecture. For those who have not subscribed yet in our YouTube channel, please do so. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment below. Or if you want a private conversation, you can send us a message to Doc Athena Facebook page. Please keep safe everyone. God bless us all. Bye!